I was in fifth year in school when I fell in love with someone that I shouldn't have. It wasn't my fault. She started it. I thought about her all the time. She sort of got inside my head. It was like this sadness came over me and I fell into a sort of zone. My own world. I was 17 years old, standing in the school shed, smoking like a trooper. Just standing there when the school bell rang. And I remember this strange silence in the schoolyard. And me, hiding alone, looking out onto the deserted yard that was left for the crows to scavenge and pull the bins asunder. I remember thinking that Daly will go apeshit when he sees the bins torn all over the place. And he'll round up a few of the messers to clean it up. So we're doing feck all studying anyway. I must have stayed there three hours. No one came looking for me. That's when it happened. That's when they first appeared. Ghost-like. Standing beside me. And me just pulling on a cigarette. That was my first experience of an hallucination. I was able to talk to them through a voice in my head. I wasn't frightened or anything. She was there, the teacher. Although I knew it wasn't really her. But to me, it was. I stood there all afternoon. No one came looking for me. No one missed me. I thought I'd friends. But looking back now, I never really had. There I was, standing alone. Smoking just me and my shadows. And when the school bus came, I got on, and they followed me home. Soon after, I started running away from home. Late at night, I'd sneak out and start running through wet ploughed fields, running up to my ears in muck and cowshite. Lost. Sometimes I'd sit in a ditch all night, damp and cold. Other nights I'd find myself standing outside the neighbour's house for no reason at all. Once I got as far as her house, twenty miles away, and stood all night in her yard, looking at her window, watching, hoping. My head was a haze. I was put out of a pub one time for staring at customers, but I wasn't really staring at them. I, I didn't even see them. I was just there, talking through my mind to my shadows. And she was there. With my shadows. It was the only way I could be close to her. I remember this, this terrible pain in my head. It was like a tight steel band was just wrapped around my skull. One night my father found me in a field near the neighbours. Covered in mud. No reason for it. That was it. He took me to the hospital. Hospital. The red brick building on the hill. I remember the smoking room. It was tiny with all writing on the wall and walls were yellow with nicotine. You never knew what was going through a fella's head in there. You could get a box in the jaw for yourself if you weren't careful. On Sundays you'd sit looking out the window down the long avenue. Waiting for visitors that never came. Which is strange. A few years ago I was in hospital with my appendix and I had loads of visitors and a bedside locker packed with grapes and lucasade and chocolates. I remember crying when my leaving cert results came out. Because of my illness my dreams had died. I had wanted to go to college to study art. It didn't matter that I could go in three years time as a mature student. It just didn't matter. I was unwell with a diagnosis of schizophrenia. When you're 17 years old, three years is a very long time. But I got there. Eventually, despite my illness, despite the medication, I made it. I got my degree. I remember the day I graduated, my parents in the audience and how proud they were, how proud I was. These days I still live at home. I wish I had a place of my own. I wish I was more independent. I wish... Wish I had more confidence. I find it very hard walking into a room full of strangers. I get up every day, make a cup of coffee and check over my shoulder to see if they're still there. The shadows. But these days, the injection keeps them away. 
Some days I go out to the studio and paint, lose myself for hours. I love the idea of colour and creating. I've had a few exhibitions. You know, it's all about having something to do, something to live for. All the tablets in the world aren't worth a damn to you if you've nothing to get up for every day. I fill my week with painting, taking long walks in the country, playing indoor soccer of a Monday evening and going down the pub whenever there's a match on. I love the days when I get out of bed, pull back the curtains and step out for a walk down a country lane in September. The gossamer webs, draped like hammocks across the bramble hedges. The birds singing, the fresh air. On those mornings, you can't help but think that life is beautiful. And yes, I know that life is hard and having this illness is hard. But life, my life, it's a gift.